day. So that answered last week's question, Parshas Vayakel. So the question was, um, where in Parshas Vayakel does it have a phrase of the same five words three times in a row? And where do we find the same set of that in Parshas Truma? And in fact, not only is the set the same, also the whole pasuk is the same, except for one word, and what is that one word? So the answer is, it's in Perak Lamed Zion, Pasuk Chof Aleph. So that's the one in Parsh Vayakel. It says, V'chaftor tacha shnei akonem mimeno, V'chaftor tacha shnei akonem mimeno, V'chaftor tacha shnei akonem mimeno. So that's three times in a row, those five words. And then if you turn back to Pasha's Truma, Chof Hei Lamed it says, V'chaftor tacha shnei akonem mimeno, V'chaftor tacha shnei akonem mimeno, V'chaftor tacha shnei akonem mimeno, L'sheishas akonem hayoitzim min hamnoiro, Hayotim min ha menoira. And then if you look in Parsha Vayakel, the difference is it says, Shesha Kana Miyotim mi meno. So mi meno min ha menoira, that's the answer, that's the difference of those two psukim. Okay. So, Parsha Kude Shabbos Chazak. If you remember back in um, Parsha Vayachi, we said like the Hassam Seifer was again saying Chazak, Chazak, Vinis, Chazak for the last time. You should really say Chazak, Chazak, Chazak three times. Are you going to say it every single? <laughs> I don't know. It's um, in, if you want to look, it's in um, 9 minutes and 42 seconds in the Vayachi Torah talk, okay? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, oh yeah, also a couple weeks ago we said about, uh, we said a whole bit of a bunch of reasons. Why is it dafka mach is a shekel? Why is it a whole shekel? So we said we brought the al sheikh b'shem Rav Shlomo al and then we also said the chida. Okay, so if you look in this week's parsha, there's a chizkuni. It seems to say a technical reason why it needs to be mach is shekel. If you look in parak lam ches pasuk chavav, it says bekel agodes mach is a shekel b'shekel akodesh. So the Chizkuni says, Go live your duel of name Misha Amar Vahoya Oilam. It was Hashem knew that Shabbat Chesab Zed died with this amount of money. This will be enough. Let's sort of calm that as a Chesab Jamishkan to, to be enough for all the silver they needed in the Mishkan, for all the Adonim, for everything. This will be exactly enough. Kemoisha and Farshakoso. Like the Pasuk explains, that's meant for the Adonim. The Fichach Tziva Shirur Zeh. That's why Hashem commanded Max the Shekel. Because Hashem knew that Max the Shekel, it's a technical reason, because that's the exact amount that will add up for exactly enough for all the silver that they needed. Okay? Seems to be a reason. Okay. So now, I'd like to just point out a few yard sites in the coming week. So as I mentioned before in Parshas Truma, that in when it was Adar Aleph, that Rosh Hashanah Adar is the yard site of of um, the Eben Ezra. So he was actually um, he was nifter on a Monday Rosh Hashanah Adar, and this this week this week last Monday it was actually Monday Rosh Hashanah Adar. It was actually the same day of the week also. Say the Adar says it was on a Monday. So. What's interesting, what's different, unique about the Evan Ezra in this week's parasha, which is the only time this happens in the whole Torah, in the parish of the Evan Ezra. If you look in the last Evan Ezra, in a Chumash Mikoris Gedolois art scroll, it says at the end, it finishes the parish of the Evan Ezra, and it says, Sefer Ve'ele Shemois Chibra La'Avram. It's a small poem, the Sefer Ve'ele Shemois by Avram, referring to himself. Nishlam Shnas. Tough tough kuf yud gimel finishes. It was finished in the year tough tough kuf yud gimel yokar kamay shoyam. The end of sefer shemayis it says it's finished in the year tough tough kuf yud gimel, which it was, which is eleven fifty three. That's when the when the Eben Ezra was the age of sixty five. Finished the parish on sefer shemayis. So this is the only place in the entire Chumash where the Eben Ezra says a year when he actually did it. And from here you can see that this is the time they did it. In Nach, though, we we did we have previously mentioned in the end of the end of 
um, Treyosa, he says they finished on Rishchoyish Teves in tough, tough Kof Yod Zayin a few years later, and in the end of Daniel, he says they finished in tough, tough Kof Yod Vav. But this is the only place in Chumash. He says the year. Heaven Ezra says the year. Okay. So this poem, though, in art school, they put it at the end of Sefer Shemarius. If you look in the Chumash Mechalik Yehuda, which is which has a parish on the Eben Ezra, so that does it in the beginning of Sefer Shemarius, and all other Chumashim, I don't think they do it at all. So okay. So now, so that's in Alpha Adar. But now, in the coming week, we have Rabbi Le- Rabbi Liyahu Ha'ismari Hakoyin. He lived, he was, um, he was born in Izmir, Turkey in 1645, about 1645. He was nifter on Ches Adarbeis, which is this Monday, Ches Adarbeis, in 1729. In, also in Izmir, Turkey. So he, he authorized countless Cheburim, he wrote many, many Sfarim. And perhaps the most well known of them is Shevet Mosar. He wrote many Svarim, including Medrash Telpiyos. Medrash Telpiyos goes through all the, the Aleph phase and says words that start, start with it, like Erechim, and it, each one's called an Anaf. And then it says, it brings Midrashim, all the different Svarim about it. So in the beginning of Anaf Hamon, it says, when it says about Hamon, he says that it's the positive says by Hamon, Hippel Pur Hua Gairel. The, so the major says on this that when he made the lot, it was actually he made a lot in all the mazalos. He made a kaira in all the mazalos, and which one did he get? He got mazal dogim, which is chodesh adar. So he said, oh, I got mazal dogim. So this shows that the the bnei will be that's, caught in my that's, hand. That's, that's fish. From, that's in the yalka, right? Yeah, yalka. Yeah, the yalka ring this. Yeah. yeah. They'll be caught in my hand like fish, as you catch fish. So do the bnei will call my hand. So the kaddish baruch Hu said to him. No, they're not caught in your hand, but you'll be caught in their hand. Because just as of this fish, Mazel is dug him, just as this fish, sometimes it swallows, this fish could swallow, but also, it could also get swallowed. So you will get swallowed from the Renee's own. But he's a fish, didn't the Renee swallow a fish? But this is the Chodesh Adar, which is what landed on, and in Chodesh Adar, that's when he was trying to kill the Bnei so. Hmm. Okay. And then the Divrei HaMagiyah over there, the Magia, he writes in this that in the Yud test of Adar Rishon from the year 1699, I had this Chiddush, I suddenly just had this Chiddush that Adar, the Mazel Adar is dug him, and Hippel Pur, who I got real, calls it Pur. It's really called a Gaira. Why does it, why is it called a Pur? Why is it called poor? So he says poor is actually Rosh Tevis of Peru, Peru, Urvu. Peru, Urvu. First two letters of Urvu. A poor is a Persian word, right? Maybe it's a Persian word, yeah. I think so. Why doesn't it say Gairo then? So it's a Rosh Tevis of Peru, Urvu, and that's by fish. So Hohen wanted to destroy them, but even though Hashem said Peru, Urvu, Mulua, Sa'aret, Hashem told the, that the Bnei Israel they will be told Adam and Chava they should fill the land but Haman was trying to go against that he was um so he was trying to um go against that and really the bracha was the bracha from the father v'yid gularoiv v'kerev v'arek v'yid gularoiv they become like fish have plentiful like fish so that's puravu poor is our shape is puravu Okay, so now on Yud Aleph Adar, this Thursday, which this year is um, Times Esther, on Yud Aleph Adar, we have three different yard sites of Yom throughout the years. First one is Rav Chaim Yosef David Azulai. Chido. The Chido is yard site. Is on Yud Aleph Adar. So, so in this in this edition of Shema Gedolim, printed about 30 years ago, Shem Akdun was printed in Yushalayim. What this is this? Um, Oitzer Farm Printing Company. So, 
it, had, it prints in the beginning of Toldor Sachido, which is from an uh, old edition. Toldor Sachido has a very lengthy Toldor of the Chido. It some, brings some amazing stories. It says the Chido has three names, three names, right? Chaim Yosef David. So what was his main name? Three names, well, what, what, what do people call him? So it brings that, in Berger Yosef, it brings his father that called him Bni Bichari Yosef. His main name was Yosef, and that's why he called his first Sefer Shar Yosef. Um, hmm. and, um, and it says he learned under, he learned when he was growing up, he learned under Rav Chaim and Otter, many Gedolim, including the Ara Chaim, the Marit Al Ghazi, Rav Shimon Sharabi, which is the Rashash. Yeah, there is the Ara Chaim. Yeah, yeah, the Rashash, Rav, Sh- Rav, Sh- Rav Sholem Sharabi, and many other Gedolim of that time. Moroccan, I think. I think all them. Moroccan, uh, he lived in Yerushalayim. The Chido lived in Yerushalayim. I think the Rashash also lived in Yerushalayim. Oh, yeah, okay. He's a Rosh Hashiva in Yerushalayim. The Rashayim, mm-hmm. I think, lived in Morocco, and then he moved to Israel. Oh, okay, so, okay. I think so. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, there's too many stories to say. Let me just tell her one interesting story that just stuck out. It's, it says, when he was in the city of Pisa, you know, leading tower of Pisa? He was in the city of, Pisa, city of Pisa. They brought in front of him a Tinoik ben Ches Chadash, and he was an eight month old child. They brought in front of him to visit him because he was sick. The child was a little bit sick. So the rat, the Chida, he looked, he looked at him, and suddenly he was, he was very like, um, bewildered. And he kissed him on his forehead, and he started teaching him the Aleph Bates on the order, the Olive Aleph Bates. And then he taught him Tashrak, he taught him the Aleph Bates backwards. He's eight months old. Yeah. And he did like this three times. Backwards and forward the Aleph Bates. And, and he would, the child would answer after him each letter. And then he told him a Pasuk, but he didn't answer when he told him a Pasuk. So the Rav said to, to, his, to his mother that he should bring him. And that night, that child was Nifter. So, okay, many days later, the, they invited the Rav to come to Suda of Bris Mila, and everyone was, just, the people in the Suda were discussing about, like, okay, Mashiach, it's taken a long time for Mashiach, like, Havta the Mashiach, Mashiach is coming. Well, when is Mashiach going to come? So, the, the Rav says, it's going to happen, like, it's a good yeah. um, the, the one that's stopping is really the Sa'ar Sheba Isa. The Yetzer Hara is the one that stops. Um, we should really be looking forward to the coming of Mashiach. And this is what was born right now. He was actually Mashiach, that child. And with, because of our Avonos, he was a Nifter while he was still young. So right away, everyone take it. The Oz, Havinu, Dehu, Hoyo, Atino, Kanizkar. That child was actually Mashiach. But he couldn't end up being Mashiach because of everyone's. Avoidance. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I guess we have to talk at him at all. Yeah. What time do you yeah. babies usually start talking? They didn't talk much later, like past the year. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so on Shabbos Kodesh, Pasha Zohar of Yud- Yudalath Adar of 1806. Chidah was Nifter, and you know it's very interesting, it's a very amazing thing about the Chidah. How old was he when he was Nifter? He was 83 years old. Okay? 83. So that was actually the same age of his father, Rav Yitzchak Zrachel, who's also Nifter 83. And also his son, Rav Yeshaya Rafael, they were all Nifter at 80, the age of 83. His father, his son, and him. And how many Sfarim did the Chidah write? How many Chiburim? He wrote exactly 83 Chiburim. That's how many things he wrote. 83. These are the four things of 83. So in this Toldos HaChidah, it just it lists them all. It says what they're all about. What was one of the most well-known ones? Birka Yosef on Shulchan Aruch, Chaymas Anach, and Tanach. Wait. Nachal Kiduim and Pnei David on the Torah, and Shem and Gedolim. Toldos of Gedolim. There's 93 total. And what's interesting... But isn't, I, um, huh? 
But I saw they reprinted all Svarm and like. Sapphire yeah, they have Cold Yeah, they have. Well, maybe much longer than they be soon. Well, some of them are like Contrasim. Some of them aren't like a thick Sefer, but. Well, the Chidon himself, every Sefer, whenever you see him in one, in one Sefer quoting a different Sefer, every Sefer calls a Contras. No matter how thick it is, every Sefer says, see what I need the only wrote in my Contras, Birka Yosef. So what's interesting is that the Chidot stands for Chaim Yosef Dov Azulai, right? Mm-hmm. So I just thought that if you open up the Rosh Tevas of the first word, Chaim, and then Yod Dalad Aleph, Chaim Yod Dalad Aleph is actually Big Maju exactly 83. The amount of his farm, his life, his father and his son's life, 83. Okay, so let's just say a Pshat from the Chidot now. That's when you say it, we better say it, Shah the Chidah. So, Pnei David, he says, Pnei David al Torah, it says in Vayakam Kuta, it says Vayas, Vayas, it says Vayas all the time, it's saying the word Vayas. So he says, maybe this is actually um, going on Moshe Rabbeinu, Vayas, and he made, who, who made, well, who, who is this? So he says, maybe it's actually going on Moshe Rabbeinu, because, because Hashem commanded to Moshe, Vyasisa, Vyasisa, you should do it. And the Omen were just the other people, like Mitzala, all the of those are just the Shluchen. But really, Vayas is talking about Moshe Rabbeinu. Or, he says, or the word, whenever it says Vayas is Vayakam Kudai, who could it be going on? It actually, what Chazal say, that all the Malacha, Kol Malacha Nazes Me'aleh, all the Malachas HaMishkan was done by itself. Apparently, the Chazal say that all the Malacha Malachas HaMishkan was done by itself. Rak Shehei Maschilin. All they did was just start it off, and the whole malacha just got by itself. They didn't need to do anything. That's what the Chazal says. That. So that's what it says. Malachik said, Vayas, Vayas, Limur is Lakosh Baruchu Kaviyochum. It's Kaviyochum Hashem means Vayas, and he, uppercase H, oh. did it. Yeah. Who also I call, because he really did everything. Really, it would be Vayasu. Yeah, Vayasu. If it's really talking about all the people that made it, they would say Vayasu. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, and then there's two other good items that were also nifter on Yud Al Adar. The first is the Rashash, not the Rashash, Rabbi Shalom Shirabi, the other Rashash, the one in the back of the Gemaros, and also on Medjraba, which is Rav Shimon, Rav Shmuel, Rav Shmuel Starshine. He was nifter in the late 1800s. So, and also Rev. Gershon Ashkenazi, the author of Chuvais Avoida Sagashuni, also Chutushi Agashuni on Shochan He was, he lived in the 1600s. So he was actually also Nifter on Thursday, Yod Alef Adar. And this year, Yod Alef Adar is on Thursday. So it must have been that the year that he was Nifter was also Tiny Sester. So this year it's. Okay. And. So Rav Gershon Ashkenazi in um, Tzemach David, Tzemach David is um, remembered from the Talmud of the Ramal and the Maral of Prague about like Seder Adairos. So the Tzemach David, he says, he, he was actually a Ben Doiroi of Rav Gershon Ashkenazi. He says like, Shayichiel Yomim Vashonim. He says like, oh yeah. He mentions the Gershon Ashkenazi and he was at the same time with him. Mm. Okay, so now the last one, of course, of Chaim Kanievsky. This is not actually this week, but it was just a cool shot, so I need to say something. I need to make an excuse that it's some prayer for his yard site. So, because we know uh, it's the second yard site this year on Shushan Purim. So, in time of the Quran, in time of the Quran, it says, very interesting thing when it says that's mixed errors, Elin, Amad Domim, that's mixed errors, that's Choshim, says Parish of the Kude, the skins of Elin, Madomim, and Eros Choshim. He says, Sorach Tam, Lama Etel, Elin, Ksiv, Oyros, Mole, Vov. By Elin, it says, Oyros, Elin, I involve Raish Tov. It says, with a Vov. But by Choshim, it says, without a Vov. It just, I Raish Tov. Oyros. I need to do the kudos to read Oyers, but really it's Ayn Reish Tov. What's the difference between the Oyers of Elam and Oyers of Tchoshim? So he says, perhaps you can say by what the Gemara says, the Gemara in Shabbos says that the, by the Tchosh, the Fishon is Damanloi, the Moshe, the Nignaz. 
Tachosh, it just appeared by Moshe, and then after I was hidden, we don't have it now. Oh, yeah. And it's Oh, that's all description. Yeah. Okay, very good. And then after that, it's like, it's like, um, Tara Haya. Then it's like, Yeah. Okay. Okay. So then there's also some home about this. Home at Shruma, some involved. It explains, lengthily explains that it was Maisa Nisim. And it says that it was for that time there was one big tachash that was created. That it's yeah, you know how long the skids were? It was thirty amos long. That's how big the skids of it was one giant tachash. It wasn't a whole bunch of tachashes. It was one giant tachash. And from that huge skin they made everything in the Mishkan, it was just from one big skin. That's what the Mishkan Khuma says. So, and we see from other Chazals that whenever it says, like one place says Ma'avirim, it's plural, Ma'avir, it would be singular, but it says Ma'avirim, it doesn't say Yud Mem at the end, it just says a Mem, it's Chaser. So we see when, even though it's plural Veloshon, we see from different Gemaros that when it's Chaser, it really is, it really is, means one. So here also, Chaser shows that there's really only one, even though it's a plural word. So when it says by Tchashim, it says Eirois, but it's Chaser, showing that it wasn't skins. It was only one skin. Even though it's plural, it just, it Chasers it, the word, to show that it was really one skin. It was all from one Tchash. But by the Eilim, they had many, many Eilim. Okay, they had whole, the, all different rams that they used it from. So that's Mole, completely Mole, Ein, Vav, Reish, Tov. Hmm. Okay, so now I just want to finish off. We don't have so much time left. But I just want to finish off quickly, um, say two quick things about Tainus Esther. The first thing is that there was once a Shaila that came up. There's once a Shaila that came up. There was one woman who was trying to, wanted to travel wanted to, um, I think, travel to the what, the government on Tainus Esther. And that year, Tainus Esther fell out on Yom Chamishi, just like does this year. It was, um, because Purim was on Sunday. So on Yom Chamishi was Tainus Esther. So since it was anyways, Tainus Esther was pushed off. So she wanted to know if she could, um, she could eat on that day. So she has the Kayach to travel. So they asked the God of Dar, and you know who the God of Dar was at that time? It's actually Rashi. They asked Rashi. This is in Shuwa's Rashi, Simon Kuf Chav Ches. They asked Rashi. And so, so, so they asked if, if she could just fast on Friday on Erev Shabbos the next day, since anyways, it's not the right day anyways to fast. So he said, even though this is not a Tainus Sivar Kavua, it's not from Divrei Tyre, it's not from Divrei Soifer, it's not even Dira Bonon Tainus, Tainus Esther. It's really a, 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 the, we are all knowing it, it's just a minog. Because the, even the one in Shushan, the, the, the actual Tainus of Esther, that was really on Pesach, they really fasted on Pesach, three days. Chazal Darshan Vayavar Mordechai, the Gemara Megillah says that it was the first day of Pesach, Vayavar, he was over. Over on fa- he, they fasted on Pesach. They, they had a header to do it then. So it can't be that it was really from the Megillah. It can't be that it's from the Rabbanon. But really, it's just a minog. And still, even though it's a minog, it says, We call look of Asher the Odom, Leo is Pirish Manat Sibar. It's still also for someone to be separated from what the Sibar is doing. It doesn't matter if it's a minog, even. Even though it's a minog, even though it's pushed off this year, it's still. Um, she can't get there to fast in their shops. And he says, so some people even think that, that when um, th- they first fast Chamishi together with the Tzibur, and then they go back and fast the next day on Arab Shabbos because they want to make the, the Tainus right next to Purim. They can't fast on Shabbos, of course, but they still want the Tainus to be next to Purim, which is on Sunday. He says that 
Rebbe, Rabbeinu, Kaiver Alem, Vaksil, Bechoshe, Cholech. Rabbeinu, he would read on them the Pasuk, the Ksil, the fool walks in the dark. So even then, because it's, it's only, a, it's a minog to do the Zechar Davar, and they're trying to be Machmer as if it's something from the Torah. But really, since it was the, everyone is knowing to do it on Hamishi, um, because we can't fast in Erev Shabbos. We can't fast in Erev Shabbos. So that's why it's enough just to do it on Thursday. Okay, so also in, um, in uh, the Siddur of Rashi, it, it, so it, it seems to, it goes against some things in the Shulchan Aruch, like it says different minhagim that we don't, we don't do, and one of them, even the Shulchan Aruch says that by the Megillah, we roll it up, we don't roll it up as a state for terror, we do it like an Igeris, so we like spread it out. So, and the Shulchan Aruch even says it's the minog of Kol Yisra. But in the Siddur Rashi, it says in Oz Sheleg, it says, Karech the Karech of Torah, the one who's reading the Megillah, he rolls it up and just like a Sefer Torah. Ain't that part of your Doesn't do like an Igarish. Shabbashtay Yeshiva. What's the reason? Because in the two Yeshivas and the base Rabbeinu, Shabbat Bavel, the house of Rabbeinu and Bavel, and all the places in Eretz Yisrael, we read it like a Sefer Torah, and that is how the Minog is. And it also says there of Amram Gaon, it says this, even the Shulchan Aruch says Minog Kol Yisrael. Okay? By the way, um, based on Rabbeinu Shabbat Bavel, the word Shabbat Bavel, just interesting, three of the same letter in a row. Shabbat Bavel. Like we said in Question of the Week pre- previously. Shabbat Bavel, last week. Okay. Okay, and then just an interesting thing, very interesting. Me'am loyes. It says the pasuk by Tainus Esther in the Megillah. It says Leich Nois to call Yehudim and Emtim Meshushan V'tzumo Lai Esther does Mordechai to fast on me V'tzumo Lai. So the Me'am loyes says. So everyone knows that Mishnah Brura, the famous Mishnah Brura, brings from the Rambam that the whole point of a tainus is not because of not eating, it's really because of to be ma'ur, the levava, so everyone should return to tshuva. So, it says usually, yeah, so usually the important, most important part of a tainus is tshuva, tefillah, and tzedakah. But here, by tainus Esther, the fast was actually different. It was supposed to be a kapara for the chet of eating by achash in the morning. Since they made the chet with eating, now they need to not eat from this fast. So the main point, the essence of this fast, was just not eating, not having food and drink. The absence of food and drink was the main point of this tightness, unlike any other tightness. I don't know about nowadays though, when we fast times Esther, I don't know, because we say Selichas, we say Aneinu, we say Selichas, so. Now it's not, for, I don't know if it's a kapara for the eating by Ahasuerus. It's really a Zecher times Esther. So maybe we can't really say that nowadays. Because we know the well-known Bach and Hilchas Kanika, Tavrish Ayin, the well-known Bach, it says that, um, he says the difference between Chanukah and Purim is Chanukah, everything's by the Neshama, and Purim, everything's by the Guf. Chanukah, it was, is all the Hoidosh of Halel, and the light of Chanukah represents Nere and Kim Nishmas Adam, the Neshama, also the Ur of Torah. Chanukah is all about the Neshama, and then Purim is about Michael, um, Michael Mishnah, Mishnah Vesimcha is Purim. And that was because everyone did the Chet with, with eating, and but by Chanukah, the Yivanim were trying to get rid of the Torah, and by Purim, Haman was trying to kill the Guf of the Yudim. So this is also, it was a tiny set, so the tiniest that goes together with Purim is also a similar thing like this. And in fact, the carbon oni is brought down to places, including the carbon, save for carbon oni. It's an interesting shot about what's the difference between a gragar and a dreidel. How come a chanak we have a dreidel and purim we have a gragar? So, the difference is on purim, it's, we hold it on the bottom. A gragar, you have, the handle is on the bottom and the, the top swings around, right? So, that's because it was, on, it was below the tato. It was on Purim, everything's on Banam, by the Gulf. But then on, on Hanukkah, we hold the dreidel, which we spin on top. Instead of spinning by Banam, we spin on... Oh. Okay, okay, we'll see.
Also, also we know like the Gemara says, Chayv Ish the Psume Bipuraya. So he doesn't know between Arahon and Baruch Mordechai, right? Person needs to have drink on Purim. Person needs to eat and drink. Person needs to have wine. Okay. Okay. So that's about Tiny's Esther. Okay, so now what's the question of the week? Oh, yeah. Question of the week. Okay, so, yeah. Okay, when he be chaydesh, how are The Pasuk says, you're going to have shishi. Park men, Pasuk, you're Zayin. When he be chaydesh, how are you showing? Bashana, Hashanis, Be'echa, La Chaydesh, Hukam, Hamishkan. So the Pasuk is very specific, but. Exactly. Yeah, it's Nisan. Right? Yeah, yeah. It says it's Nisan. Okay, we know it's Nisan. So, but do we know what week it was? Oh, what That's day of the week? What what day mm-hmm. of the week? Day of the week. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for listening to Torah Talk. Oh, yeah, it's a Gemara. It's a Gemara. Okay. Okay. Thank you for listening to Torah Talk. Parshas Fikude. Okay. Okay.